Hello, my dear audience. In this episode, we gonna visit an absolute masterpiece. The Shaver House is small in size and with no luxury facilities. Still, it is full of interesting design features. Made mostly of wood and surrounded by trees, it has the enclosed feeling of a cabin in the woods. Yet at the same time, the large windows make the design extremely spatial and the house constantly balances between intimacy and transparency. The Schaefer house is generally considered as the best of the early houses by Lautner and like many of these early designs, the influence by Frank Lloyd Wright is still prominently visible. With a single story floor plan and a cheap construction of wooden bricks, the Schaefer is inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's Usonian style. Despite these similarities, Lautner goes with the Schaefer house for the first time a step further than Wright in mixing the interior with the exterior, creating a strong interaction between inside and outside. Also different than Frank Lloyd Wright, are the multiple axes of the house that create many different perspectives that lead the view into the landscape. The Schaefer residence is probably best known for its use in the movie A Single Man, which was almost entirely filmed inside the house. If you haven't seen it, go watch that wonderful movie. On many photos, the house looks isolated, deep in the forest. Ironically, nothing can be further from the truth, because it is located in a suburban environment and is enclosed by neighboring houses from all sides. All these neighboring houses look the same, and with this unusual design, the Schaefer residence immediately catches your attention when driving by. Also interesting is that the house is partly sunken below street level due to the rising hillside. This further contributes to the enclosed character of the house. From the street we see the entrance in the garden fence. And to the right of the entry is the carport. Before we step inside, we first gonna take a look at the floor plan. The house is way shaped from above. Why did John Lautner choose for this unusual shape? The commissioners of the house already owned the location many years before the house was built and they used it as a picnic site. They wanted that the many beautiful oak trees would be kept in place and therefore John Lautner had to design the house around the already existing trees. A second reason for the shape is that John Lautner wanted that every room could look into the garden and that you could see the trees from everywhere in the house. We color the separated spaces of the house and name the different functions. The floor plan turns out to be very open and when we decorate the drawing with furniture we see how compact this house actually is. From the entry gate, we walk through the garden and from the front door, we step right into the living room. Once inside, the first thing that stands out are the many red and brown colors in combination with an interplay of light and shadow, making the living room feel like a continuation of the forest outside. The wooden roof beams are visible at the ceiling and they form a pattern of stripes and lines which creates a strong linear perspective and makes the interior look larger than it is. Because the roof is placed in different directions, the interior looks different from every angle. Here's a skylight that brings sunlight inside in front of the fireplace. The large open living room is divided by the brick fireplace that has openings on both sides and create two different sitting areas. One sitting area is more like a den and is smaller with a private character 
It has a couch built in an alcove. Two large windows come together in the corner. The lack of a window frame in the corner breaks open the living room and increases the feeling of space. At the inside of the corner is a reading area that is sunlit like a conservancy. Here is a small rectilinear planter which brings the garden in front of the inside of the windows. John Lautner wanted to have an unbroken view towards the garden and therefore the use of window frames was limited and two windows were glued together in the corner. For extra strength, four glass balusters were placed against the outside of the windows. Here is the back door from where you can step into the garden. And next to it is another planter that could function as an internal garden but on this photo it has only pebbles in it. Above it is a series of small skylights. Next to the planter in the skylights is the second sitting area, which is larger and has a more open character. It is heated by the other side of the fireplace and there is a trellis of vertical wooden beams that is there for privacy reasons because it prevents people to look into the sitting area from the garden. The light that falls through the openings in the trellis recreates the play of light and shadow that you see in the forest when sunlight falls through the trees. We go to the dining table and from there the living room looks like the composition of an abstract artwork. Instead of the more conventional sliding doors, the glass doors swing open. On hot days, almost the entire right side of the living room opens towards the garden, allowing a stream of fresh, cool air and blurring the verge between inside and outside. Through the swinging doors, we step outside on the terrace. A part of the roof extends all the way to the back side of the garden so there's lots of place to sit outside in the shadow. In the rear, the porch is supported by a brick wall that is V-shaped from above. From here, we walk past the outside of the kitchen. We go around the large oak trees and arrive at the laundry and storage units, which are placed at the back side of the carport. From this door we step inside the kitchen. The amazing carpentry in the house is made mostly of redwood, which comes from a cypress tree. This kind of wood was also the favorite material of Frank Lloyd Wright. The wall of the kitchen is made from horizontal wood boards combined with small rectilinear windows. The wood boards create enough privacy, while the windows in between still provide a view over the garden. This makes the house transparent and intimate at the same time. It's like living in a glass house and still being invisible. The lines of the wood board also lead the perspective outside and they recreate the typical shadows that you see so often in the forest. The walls of the kitchen are almost identical with the garden fence, making it hard to see what's outside and inside, again enlarging the feeling of space. We leave the kitchen and go to the bedroom wing.
there's a glass alcove that has a planter with the same pebbles as at the other side of the glass. This creates the illusion that the garden enters the house. After climbing up two steps, we arrive at the bedroom. The bedroom has many built-in closets. These non-removable cabinets are very common in houses from the 40s, 50s and 60s. While sleeping in bed, you can look outside at the bushes and trees through a large horizontal frameless window. For privacy reasons, only the bathroom has smaller sized windows. Because wood cannot resist water, the walls of the bathroom are made of corrugated steel. This was cheaper than stone and it reveals that the expensive looking house was built very economic. The office or study room also functions as a guest bedroom. Especially here you can see how good the interior continues into the garden. Because the window is placed diagonal, there is hardly any reflection. And again, there is no window frame in the corner. This makes the glass almost invisible. The garden becomes part of the interior, looking like an internal planter and making the small room feel very large. While sitting behind this desk, you can hardly believe that you are so close to the street, which is just at the other side of the garden fence. For so far the walkthrough of the interior, but this video wouldn't be complete without an overview of the roof construction, which is unlike any other house in the world. Roughly, you can say that the house has three different kind of roofs. First is the flat roof. Then there is a diagonal roof above the kitchen, which climbs to the east side. And finally, there is the gable roof, which is L-shaped from above and partly overlaps the flat roof. This is the ridge of the roof and in this direction both sides of the roof climb to the highest point. Let's now explore each of the roof parts one by one. We begin with the flat roof. This roof starts in the garden, enters the house, goes through the living room, then it goes over the front door and finally it ends at the carport. The roof is first supported by two brick walls of the carport. The wall at the left is made of wood and has no retaining function. A series of pillars is placed in the wall that separates the kitchen from the garden path. Because of these pillars it is still possible to have a fan window of the entire length of the wall. Then the roof is supported by two brick walls which you can see here. Although this looks like a chimney, the chimney is actually here and this is a massive column made of bricks that supports the roof in the middle. Once outside, the roof is supported by wooden pillars that look like a continuation of the window frames inside. They take the perspective of from the living room into the garden. Finally, the roof is supported by the V-shaped brick wall. Now we go to the gable roof. The ridge of the roof is supported by a horizontal trellis of three wooden beams. The trellis starts next to the window of the study room. Then it is supported by the internal wall of the bedroom. And then it makes a sharp turn and it spans over the living room. The corner and the ridge was made by miter sawing the beams and placing them against each other. For extra strength, steel corner joints were placed around the contact points. The trellis is supported by one of the brick walls 
that is also supporting the flat roof. The ridge continues outside, where it is placed on a flat roof. The lower part of the roof is supported by a second trellis. These three beams also start in the study room and are resting largely on the internal walls of the bath and bedroom. They end on the brick column next to the fireplace that also supports the flat roof. The edge of the roof, which forms the lowest part, is supported by a series of wooden pillars that also function as window frames in the corner of the living room. The reason for the unusual construction of the gable roof is that you don't need internal pillars or retaining walls, so you can have large windows and open spaces underneath. Interesting is that the ridge continues beyond the end of the gable roof and partly helps in supporting the diagonal roof by forming a part of the construction. However, for the most part, this diagonal roof rests on the flat roof at the left and at the right it rests at the diagonal window frames that continue into vertical pillars in the wall of the kitchen. What's the reason for this diagonal roof? The high oak trees largely prevent the sunlight from entering the house. By placing the roof and the windows diagonal, you have a clear story from where you can look at the tops of the trees and catch the sunlight from above. There's a triangular window at the vertical side of the gable roof. The Schaefer House is one of my favorite designs by Lautner. It's peaceful, warm and humble, yet at the same time it is spectacular, experimental and daring. A genius design that still looks fresh and modern after 75 years, making it a perfect example of Lautner's brilliant vision on architecture.